Hey guys, welcome back, Maris here, and today we have Phoenix Point and my 30 tips for the game. Let me give you right away few few things we need to mention here. I'm not going to discuss uh, specific tactics or what you should do like specifically in, in because there are so many ways to play, but I will give you advice and this advice, these all advices will be basically to enjoy more of the game. So maybe some mistakes or something, but we'll not go in full details or something that specifically to do or or, or how your team structure or something. Like that. But let's just jump into my few first tips and just yeah, let me know what you know, uh, what you think about them or you if you have anything else to add. So first tip, obviously, not obviously, but uh, play rookie. I restarted the game already the third time. I started, I think it, it was hero. I felt like I know the XCOM, I have played absolutely every XCOM possible strategy, uh, tactic game, uh, completed, I believe all of them, a few of them more, more than once. So I felt like hero is for me. The game is absolutely punishing you. Went down, okay, like, like I admit it, maybe I overestimated, went veteran. Things went the same way. The game is basically literally hating you and making you hate played it. Play it. I went down rookie, which is the easiest one, and I felt like, yeah, the, probably will be totally not worth it. And I'm still, at, in some missions, hitting pretty hard walls, and game is still kinda, so on rookie, it's normal. Simple as that, just keep, be open-minded, trust me. The, I'm, I'm saying maybe veteran, maybe now I know more of the tactics and everything, I can play veteran, but go rookie simple as that otherwise the game is just totally just punishing you for playing it point number two uh f5 is your friend uh f5 if you don't know yet it's quick save and quick saving why i'm mentioning this i will just give you one example i'm not suggesting any uh, saves scam or something like that but you have your especially at the beginning i'm still quite far but i have one major basically my team right that that i can work with and that i can play with if you send them for example scout here you see it already will take few days to fly over there or, or this scouting if in the same situation this base is attacked there's no time i can fly back there will be many occasions because the map is really huge it's not like xcom that you can run around and because all the missions basically ha has a timer in, in which which um, time you need to attend to. And why quick saving? Because quick saving actually helps. If you are, before you do anything, you just quick save and let's say you fly here and in one day when you are further away, this base basically is being attacked. Yeah, basically, yeah, you you want to go back in time. That's simple as that. And otherwise, you will lose a lot of bases, a lot of chances, a lot of <laughs> a five of your friend. Point number three: make hard saves. That is especially important. Why? Because there's only one quick save. Other titles nowadays kind of keep at least three of them, right? Writes the the oldest one, so you have some fresh amount this is not the case so occasionally that's why i have easy just because difficulty uh geoscape and geoscape 2 because time after time make a hard stop because you never know when you do something extraordinarily stupid for example i'll give you again an example there's a uh, there's a mission doesn't matter how it's called i don't know how but basically i for two days i tried to get it done and basically failed every single time. The only thing I figured out, this is not meant to be played in my current, with my current team, setup, items, levels. They're not f f fully leveled yet. So I need to come back when I'm stronger. But if you are already in the fight, yeah, there are maps where you can just squash out your, for example, ambushes and everything. And if all of your team is being destroyed, that's something you don't want to carry on. Like, that's a mistake. So hard stop saves also from, from doing largely huge mistakes. Uh, okay, now something for me, it, I, I should 
had to learn is bases don't specialize them and by specialize i mean i give you one example of what had in my mind if you look at training facility uh, it gives you experience points every base um, every facility gives you experience points so if you let's say have all the base literally everything with training facilities then a soldier's thing there for one or two days would be maxed out and would be leveled up from zero to hero in no time. That was my first idea and that was my first approach. And then for the second base, I was going to make uh, uh, um, research centers and something and something. So don't do that. That's 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 what I mean mean by saying sp don't specialize your base. Why? Because uh, you have those bases spread across the world and you need them too heal to um, replenish stamina to time after time repair your bots so basically you need every base to kind of be capable of doing that and if you specialize them for example if you have your training centers like I, for example i have currently here then only here in this base will be all the time my soldiers so there's no way i can normally operate over here because just the flying will take all the time right so you need to spread across and keep in mind make every base viable make every base kind of with every building that's that's my kind of what i took away from first two times when i played and made, made this mistake right point number five simple enough just mentioning there will be some really simple things but i just find them valuable because at the beginning it doesn't doesn't seem like it, they matter you have three resources, uh, I, ca I call them components here, but anyways, uh, you basically can uh, sustainably make food. That's another topic, but um, what you are missing, I'm currently missing tech. When you zoom in, you can find where you can trade anything else to get the tech. And what to do is trade, 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 trade. There are Another YouTube videos I also saw guys who had thousands of everything else and not having this this materials. Yeah, it's materials. The bases are literally out there and not everyone is the same. For example, here they are showcasing what they have a lot of. So in this case you see materials. Just fly over and by fly over I mean all the time constantly. When I'm you run out of something, keep nice sweet balance for example i am currently unbalanced a lot of unbalanced trade 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 that's how you get things of course you can raid and then get things as well but that's required fighting if you have food or any other resource a lot trade 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 that's it um sixth point simple enough keep scan on cooldown especially in the beginning when you have nothing on the map because once you run out of areas to explore you basically run out of do thing you you cannot do things but there, there is no of course you can raid uh, that's another topic but don't i would not suggest to raid any of them at the beginning so scan 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 whenever scan is off offline i currently have i have more of these keep in mind another this actually was a bad idea to scan from here. I will just throw extra tip for scanning. You see, it is expanding and I found there is no reason to overlap the scans. You see, this green area, this, this I'm trying to show, this one, was explored before, right? So if there was any point of interest, I would already reveal, reveal them. Currently, expanding from here, half of this circle was already explored and basically it's wasted. Instead, you see this is, it's it's uh, coloring out only at the end. Instead, wise decision would be here, from here scan. Then would it would expand and at the end would color out more of the, just, just keep in mind that don't do a lot of overlap when scanning, okay? Uh, point number seven, uh, yeah, this is something Keep in mind, research, manufacture, food, gaining food, and storage are, are shared. Which means if you have research, it, it doesn't matter where you have actually your research uh, facilities. 
I have them across everywhere, fabrication plants as well, building more. It doesn't matter, it come together to uh, production capacity in all bases and production of kind of production of research, so reducing research time. So again, it, it, it's another point how it works against specializing bases. It's, it doesn't matter. You can have, this is the funny part, you can have fabrication plant in other side of the world. When you create something, it will be right with your soldiers all the time. It's shared and it's all across. And the same for food. You don't need any logistics to transfer or, or I don't know, scientists or anything. That's, that's not there. It's all shared. Point number eight. Uh, explore red mist is priority. Uh, I will explain quickly, for example, how I have, yeah, I did, I did my work here. So that is the area where two things happen. Aliens, I call them aliens, Pandorians attack and build base, build bases. And both of those things are timed. This base is destroyed. But literally, if you leave a base unattacked for some time, it will, they will just pack and leave. Simple as that. And leave to build another base. So you want to cover this scanned area, these scans to cover all the red things. Because if, for example, let me find where I don't have it. Damn it. Game, give me back my ability to right about here if for example okay, I have it revealed but uh, at the beginning if there is a let's uh, let's call it a fortress and red mist is covering it it most likely will be attacked if you have not revealed discovered that point yet you don't know when you discover it will be too late it will be already discovered as destroyed city so cover the red things as, as fast as possible because also there will pop up those enemy bases you need to attack. Whenever you attack, actually, yeah, the number goes down. So that's another reason why you want to discover them as soon as possible. Uh, point number nine that you can see how I did it as well. At the early stage, when you do exploring and, and covering the world, you can basically skip the scavenging site. Of course, there are resources, you can have resources, but one reason why you don't want to fight every fight right away when you have a lot of question marks is you want to find more bases, you want to discover, cover more area, because that also your, your missions when they are far away and you don't have connected uh, points, you can't travel there. So you want to expand. And third, most important, whenever you fight, there is possibility that your uh, soldiers will be injured. And when they're injured, they can, they, well, at some certain point, you need to recover them. Whenever they're recovered, that's called downtime. You just sit and do nothing. There's no progress whatsoever, right? So as you can see, I flew over and discovered what I needed, got all the bases and left scavenging sites. Now, when I have more time, more actually to fly carriers I can make two teams one that for the progress another is going and scouting for so these these scavenging sites they basically stay there they wait for you when when you need your resources you can go and uh, uh, get them all right all right uh, tip number 10 uh, prioritize faction quests that is specifically when you look at I actually have them all currently at 24, 49, and 75 is the when you hit the wall, basically. It will never pass the friendly, um, how it's called, friendly attitude to me until I do this quest. Basically, this is my go to right away because nothing I do will go surpass the, the friendly. Whenever I unlock, basically the blocker it will continue to grow to 49 and then again i hit that the second mission that's why it's called mission phase two and then it hits 74 percent and again i need to finish it to actually get bypassed and then then that yeah those are the blockers and the missions will not appear until you actually reach those percentages then prior 
prioritize them. That's what I will do in the uh, current stage. Uh, so, so you can get more whenever you discover something or, or something to get more influence to get. Otherwise, you are blocked. All right, point number 11. Uh, deny or actually delay another option, faction quests. Uh, by faction quests, there are sometimes, I'm not quite sure these are the ones, there are sometimes that pop, pop up the quest. It actually is when, when you don't meet these uh, next level uh, missions. Uh, there, there's an option, for example, um, New Jericho guys, they really hate uh, what which ones are they? Basically, both of them. Anno and then Synergions. Stupid name, but anyways. And they will ask, okay, you can boost my, um, my, my support if you raid them, right? So basically, they fight each other. And if you pick that mission, that's what I'm saying. Don't pick it at all. Or when you pick it, it will be under this, this bar and just don't do it. Why don't do it? Because you will just gain support from one and lose to another, or actually to lose to both of the other ones. Overall, there is no benefit of doing that, right? You, only if you want to straight just one this support one particular guys. I'm not doing that, as you can see. I'm, I will be friends with everyone. So those actions, I would not suggest. We will get to the point why I'm not suggesting this as well. All right, uh, point number 12, I need to get going because the video will be okay, it's already long. Uh, <laughs> I will try to get one tip to one minute, but okay, let's hope. Uh, get food. Get food is simple, sounds simple, stupid. Get food, why food? Remember the trading part when you need to trade? Constantly incoming resources so far in the game. I haven't seen the end, end game yet. Keep in mind that might be additions next videos but from the beginning you can get food you just simple go in base and build those silly food production they give each um, soldiers at the beginning you will not have a lot of soldiers so you there will be more food than you actually eat and food you can trade that's the basic principle you can get a lot of food basically in every this this building and just to give you the answer it was 30, 36 days or something is the time when this food production plant, uh, food, food production will give you that much food that it will be repaid themsel themselves. They are kind of costly. I will just quickly show you just because 200 um, materials and that the other one is called tech. So, what I'm trying to say is it will take some time, 30 something days, I calculated it, uh, to get as many food, how much you spend. And then every extra next day, you get more out of the food production. That's simple as that. It will take some time, but so far I haven't found any income from tech or from materials. Probably later with some research. But anyways, from the beginning, you can go a little bit nuts with food. As I, I did actually, and then trade, trade what you need. That, that's why I have so much materials. I just traded everything off because it will come back. Anyways, point number 13, don't rush training perks. I will quickly show you because we are touching every point of the game. That's why the video is so long. These are the perks and I will show you why there was one particular dude. I guess this one. Now let's take this one. So, you see, there's awesome perk. This is kind of basic soldier. Return fire. Shooting enemy back and everything is cool in this current state. And by that I mean, if you look closely, and you can of course decide for yourself, but he has this one at the bottom line. There are three random perks you can get. He can get heavy weapon proficiency 30 percent bonus damn that's a nice bonus right uh so it means for this dude particularly it would be really smart to get uh another new class that you can learn two classes 
and pick up heavy training. And actually take a heavy training, take the strongman and then he would be excellent heavy, heavy, heavy soldier. So back to my advice. When you have heavy, obviously, not obviously, but not for you, but definitely I will give him grenade launcher. Fuck yeah, grenade launcher with extra damage, he will be just smashing through all the enemies. If you know the game, with grenade launcher, there will be never ever return fire. Return fire is only with rifles and uh, basically bullet shooting things, right? So if I equip, and most likely I, at the end, when I fully groom him, I will make him heavy. And then this point will be pointless. So you see, that's where this trick comes in. And there are many cases, especially with the soldiers. Depending on what kind of, for example, shotgun and melee weapon, most likely I will take second class, there is a melee, a berserker, and he will be a melee. Again, there, there is no return fire, right? So keep in mind that uh, at the beginning it looks like you want to take everything, but keep in mind that maybe you will pick up second class and the second class will be his actual real class he is playing to. I'm always picking dash because that's for every class basically needed. Bonus damage, grenade and speed, but yeah, it's, keep in mind, not everything you need to pick because you don't know if you actually will change the class, okay? That's the point. Point number 14. Uh, grow your fleet and army when growing influence. And this is just simple, but I will already show, explain my uh, problem. I have two aircrafts, so that's the fleet, and I don't have enough army, actually. These are low-level noobs. I don't have two armies. So it means, as you see from this um, area, I have covered a lot. I see a lot, but there's no way I can fight here and in the time, in the same time, if there will be attack. So what I mean is keep in mind to get more ships. By ships, I mean fly, fl flight carriers, and more, and more army. You can't grow in this game by influence, kind of the scan and any got, got all those bases revealed. If you can't protect them and you will lose them and, and then just keep in mind you need to grow everything the fleet the army and the influence as the influence and, and explored area will grow okay point number 15 simple enough i picked it up from actually one of the other youtube videos i saw i don't know just from the beginning the game seems a little bit silly and doesn't give you kind of take away enough our, um, ammunition. As per my knowledge, both, and let me, let me repeat it again, both alien base attacks, there are two different base when you raid their base, both of them will spawn enemies unlimited. Basically the only way only two, uh, three ways how to get out of this unlimited enemy spawn. Complete the mission, run away from mission, or fucking die. That's it. Otherwise, and I want, that was nightmare half of day I spent in the mission, because I, I made some probably poor judgment or whatnot, and enemy spawned and spawned and spawned and spawned and I kill and kill and kill, but I could not surpass the rate how they spawn. So you see where this extra ammunition comes in handy. And I was not expecting this. It was casual. I attacked the base. It was like, yeah, I, I run through a few of the bases. I'm not falling behind. I kind of control everything here. This one mission was just out of the blue. I burned almost all ammunition at the end. I was like, and and to be honest, at the end, I just rushed and 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 um, killed the the finished the mission while my other teammates were already bleeding. I was r running out of medication or anything, so just packed that fucking ammunition. It's it's at the beginning, especially at the beginning when you don't have a lot of additional equipment and and not you see I can still 
pack a few more ammunition. Just, just take ammunition, okay? <laughs> uh, point number 16. Unequip rare ex um, equipment to reverse engineering. This is something I also people were complaining. So how you get, let me show you, for example, this thing, how you get to build it if you don't have it, but you have it, if this particular item is still equipped uh, to your soldiers, it will not count. Let me Let me actually demonstrate it for you. If we go down, find our guy and give him back his turret. You just just take it. And now if you check the search, you see I have required items to start zero. Previously it was one. So coming back to it, whenever you recruit a, a new soldier, they sometimes come with the new shiny things for example this armor is not from the beginning this armor is not from the a rifle is not from the beginning but you can hire and they come already right away with this armor then just unequip it throw it back in your inventory and then your researchers can pick up reverse engineering and then you can start manufacturing it all right that's how it works simple as that um point number 17 just from my previous video you probably picked up but there's a without any major spoilers but obviously at some point you start capturing live aliens to do extra research in other every single other XCOM games it was if you kill every other enemy and let's say there's one last alien left and you mind control it right you control that enemy he's still alive but he's in your power then mission was over and that enemy was considered to be still alive right because you can literally in alien live body come back to base i don't know walk into a research center and then stop the mind control in this game it doesn't work like that you need to actually stun them and then they are considered par paralyze them to consider them live yeah mind control the enemies will not be captured alive i don't know why because the game is way weirder than uh, XCOM. <laughs> right. Point number 18, just a small thing. Whenever you will have your vehicle, I call it a tank, I don't know why. That missile is absolutely insanely cool, but it runs out of ammunition. Keep that in mind. I was actually not aware of the beginning and thank God I had my strongest team with me, but when I run out of the artillery, this stuff is literally pointless and then that armor goes down quite quickly if enemies start to uh target this tank so without this ammunition and it was eight eight rounds or something then it's useless just keep that in mind and yeah okay extra information it takes three slots so whenever you have at the beginning your oh sorry your um, manticore it has six slots so if you decide to build and take this tank with you you will have option to pick three more um, soldiers with you just again it's up to you what to pick how to pick i'm not going to judge that point number 19 okay this is important now we come back remember that stupid point where someone is already in comment section yeah, i want to raid new jericho this, these are jerks whatever don't tell me what to do i will tell you what to do let's look at the uh, diplomacy if you haven't figured out there is zero and then there are basically thresholds 25 50 and 75 right these are the blockers to friendly the same way it goes backwards and backwards i mean in minuses you see here and this is two important things to keep in mind obviously when you attack them they will not be happy if and when you fall behind basically below zero you become unfriendly this is i'm just representing that's not me but once you come unfriendly you lose trade so every base in the map that's literally one third of the bases 
well, to be fun, honest, like, I guess 15, will be lost for you to trade. Eh? You want to take the chance? You want to anger maybe two of the factions. Keep in mind that the other, every other uh, tips I already gave to trade, actually also recruit and then the, 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 everything you don't want to upset them and there's even more oh oh boy oh boy it's even more none of them reach that but this 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 aggressive when you reach i think it was aggressive oh no not when it falls minus 75 and lower you become at war which sounds like already bad but that's the point of no returning it i picked it up actually from phenoxypedia Phoenixopedia, yes. Um, if and when you are at war, there is a no way you can win them back. Keep that in mind. And of course they will attack you. There, of course there's no trade. There's, there is no other penalty from basically 0 to 75. There's no nothing for at 20, 25, minus 25 and minus 50. But those two key moments you need to keep in mind. Unfriendly, which is really bad. You lose all the trades and 75 that faction is lost for you you can do it but you need to keep in mind all the consequences okay that's why i'm here and <clears throat> giving you all all this information okay 20.20 20. compare items just quickly quick thing small thing but oh boy oh boy this is a bit ridiculous but if you think this dude is better with any other gun. No, this dude, no. Can I? Yeah, this is this is a cool gun. But you pick up the gun and mouse over. That's how it works. The the const. And really funny thing is, in this screen you see weapon you pick at the right side and weapon you are looking at currently in your hands in the right side. I would expect it things to like be other way around because currently if you mouse over you see the first screen from the right side because that's how you read is nothing and then the other thing oh it's better but no that's already weapon in your inventory so you see less damage yeah but shoots two more bullets look at the effective range more than twice and look at the ammo capacity like hell to the yeah so no, uh, that, that's uh, also for any other item. I'm not quite sure I have it. Yeah, I don't have it. But uh, if you are looking, for example, for armor as well, mouse over, click, mouse over, and you see the difference. Yeah, little bit armor sacrifices, but hell yeah, stealth and accuracy. So that's just how to compare things. Um, Twenty point number twenty-one. Don't sit idle. An idle is when you get too much damage to your crew or I don't know, you wait for a research or manufacture or something that should always be the thing to fly for to if you even have all the part currently explored and there's no new points of interest, right? There's always somewhere where you can trade, right? So be out there, fly out there, explore points. I have a lot of everything. I have. Don't sit idle. This game is really punishing if you just place, press the. This, this, this. Don't do this. Right? I will load, of course, afterwards. And this is where I'm attacking. Not me, but, well, my guys need to go and cover. So, that's that. Don't sit idle. Mmm. Spend willpower point. Okay, now we are actually in in fight in, in fight. Uh, let's just uh, because I need battle battle screen to show you. Uh, spend willpower ASAP, and it gave me wrong kind of vibe at the beginning when the game says like, you have limited amount and, and willpower is not reg regrowing back itself. And I tend to save those willpower points like a special button. No, 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 no. Think other ways. And when I turn this thinking in battles another way around, it actually changed everything. Oh, fuck.
Okay, not not that bad. That's not their worst um, uh, modification. But when you have willpower, you see every everything starts at the beginning. In backer build, it was it could go past. But here, let me show you example. For example, I want my sniper to come up here because it's better vantage point. He will trigger this willpower points giving back. I don't know how to call special place, but if not not a single willpower point is expanded uh, used up, it will just go and waste. You want to see it? Of course, at the beginning always save, quick save, as I said. Let me let me demonstrate how not to do things. All right. You see, I actually already stepped on that. That that area is used. Not a single point was used. I, I, literally everything was lost. So, what I mean by that, I literally at every start of the uh, game use up. And for soldiers, it's always a rush. For heavy, it's always jetpack. For sniper, you can just right away quick uh, take a quick shot. Uses three three points. Let me just demonstrate it. Um, Okay, I will demonstrate with my snipers, right? You don't need to shoot right away. You don't know if you want to attack right away, but you just use up your willpower points. And to be fair, fine. When you are sure that every single one of your characters... You see, at the top, another point. This is again three or four points of willpower come comes back when I land here and land here and I... so just demonstrating so whenever you have used up all your members so basically none none of the soldiers currently have full willpower because everyone used ability and remember not a single well yeah this dude used but others did not use any action point yet so now if i pick up and still want to go here for some reason boom you see now i'm back again my team has full almost yeah actually one point missing fine that's that's little but in general they are full back and i have already enabled quick shot right so that's the thing this this changes a lot and whenever you get a crate or kill an enemy you get back those willpowers so what i'm trying to say treat those willpowers as something to actually use a lot <laughs> that, that's the main idea it just helps a lot in the battles and yeah that's point number 23 is actually and again i already started to mention Rem remember and learn how to get back those willpower points. So one of the things is obviously killing enemy. For example, if I have both snipers and both of them see enemy that is clear, close to death, and one of them has used, is missing some willpower points, other has full willpower points. Keep in mind that pick up the guy who has missing them, kill that enemy, if that's final kill shot, because he will regain the willpower. Again, another thing, for example, let me show you again. What I'm doing here, this is just buggy thing. It doesn't trigger because you need to move a little bit. But you see, I used four points to run over here, but I regained five of them. I'm back to full willpower and I have already picked up the box. And the same goes for these high, high ele ele elevated, elevated uh, areas. You can easily, from the beginning, get them back. I could actually land here and pick this spot from regaining willpower. And one last thing I will mention for... Yeah, I can Yeah, I can show. From getting back willpower is this awesome perk for heavy. Killing an enemy grants allies one additional willpower. So actually, if that would be my bombarder, this, this grenade launcher, I could make there is there is a combination awesome combination 
where you can just keep killing enemies, bombarding in one turn, and every enemy dies, will will return willpower. It's something in the middle of fight when you kind of run out of, you used all the abilities and used all the willpower. There is a ways and learn them, learn them and exploit them. For example, those three areas are up to me to pick up three, nine willpower points. Just like that, for everyone, for everyone in the single team. So yeah, yeah this is too much spend time on this, but trust me, this, this changes how you fight in general. Um, point number 24. Never, ever, ever use this fire button. Because currently, it, it just blows my mind. I just, yeah, don't do that. Why? Because there's almost never ever a situation where you want, for example, if here you shoot, there is a high chance that you actually will shoot in the leg. Or he moves or anything. There was like, like even if you stand right to the, there was a case where I stood right next to the worm on the ground and I click and I almost already hit, like just auto shoot it. I see that you clearly will shoot. And when I took this, this clear, uh, <laughs> look it was something okay, this is a bad example how to, I need someone who who has a bigger rectangle and auto aim was something like this and there was literally half of the worm outside so if I would just click auto shooting 50% chance it will just hit the box so what I did I literally pulled out from from the box where still all my circle covers the, the, the stupid worm and 100% chance of the shot. So there is absolutely no reason to just hit this button. This game is built, this is the, its mechanics. Always, always and always and always aim. With everyone, everywhere. Always aim. Just, just don't trust the auto, auto shoot. Okay? All right. Um, Point number 25, um, use Overwatch to engage. This is, for example, a mistake I already did, because that's just in general in fighting. They already saw me. Whenever they will have a chance in next turn, they this dude, for example, can just stay there and shoot and shoot and shoot. He can shoot up to two, four times if he has a pistol, he can shoot. So how to use, how how you can break the game. What I should do, should have done, is stand here before actually seeing them and make Overwatch. Then, it basically in, in XCOM game, games it worked the same. Then enemy is the one who is running up to you already using half of their action points, then suddenly they turn around, turn across the, the, the corner and see like, oh damn, there's XCOM or soldiers and then he has half of that already used and then his the enemy automatically kind of tries to get to the cover use more action points or even put down the shield or something so basically they don't attack right so it's a surprise mechanics the winner is the one who is prepared when someone is advancing to them that's simple kind of tactics uh, in every XCOM game it worked, and it works awesome also here. This is already a little bit, bit too late. I saw them, they saw me, basically now at the next turn, firing starts. So this uh, Overwatch is really powerful before you engage, to trigger engage, because obviously you, when you land, the maps are not that big. You, you see where, you see this is literally whole map. And I started here. Obviously there will be enemies. I could just stand here and already make overwatch and then end the turn. They start moving, my guys start shooting, they hide and then a second turn starts. They already lost some health. I already have advantage and my turn is again to shoot. This is simple. I'm explaining I hope you guys get from what I'm trying to explore. Oh, shit, video is long, okay. Um, 
next thing, next few last things is, uh, yeah, in the in this fight will be actually excellent example. Advice number twenty six: disable high threat, high damage targets first, and by high you will need to get that yourself. For example, in this current situation, you might think that these heavy and usually the heavy are the ones you want to disable first because they have artillery that explodes but these dudes they just spawn worms so if i can in every turn kill three or four well six or eight worms then i'm good then i get ca they can be kind of ignored and this advice is to the snake-alike enemy that can mind control. That is to these guys that can turn invisible if receive one of the shots. And uh, yeah, just aim them. Just you will need to learn from the game which enemies are the worst, because, for example, when you have that mind controlling stuff whenever they attack basically there's always they take mind control you lose one soldier they are still full strength you lose power a lot and the same is for little things that jump on the face even if you shoot them down that um, soldier is disabled for a turn that's a really big stuff when every shot ca uh, counts when every enemy taken down counts and these dudes these little dudes have machine gun that's not what I'm worried about but they all have grenade launchers as well that's something you want also to disable and then take as a priority <clears throat> just just mumbling it's it's not nothing new for this point but this game it takes it to pretty serious levels Point number 27, it's basically when you're out of the uh, fight, try again, 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 try to minimize your uh, losses. And losses, I mean by health. Whenever you're, this is my dream team, basically, this is my highest level personnel. If this fight ends with, with one or two below half of the health, I need to go back to base and heal them. That's a downtime. That's... And you saw already how many, how many points, um, how many points of interest I still have to explore, to fight, and everything. So you want to minimize downtime when when your guys are just sitting at home and, and resting. Of course, you need to get stamina back. That's normal, but you don't want to go back extra by, because of the health, right? Point number 28 is um, mixing your team. This is especially important. Uh, whenever you see my big team is two snipers. Snipers are really good, but they have also weaknesses. How many shots they can take, the, the running abilities, the um, more, let's say. They don't have shredding ability and a, a lot more. These soldiers are kind of casual and everyone's like, no, no, pick everything, just just focus, sniper. Um, why you don't want to do that is uh, literally for those two snipers, they take high valid, high threat targets out. This heavy is especially for those uh, artillery things and, and everyone basically with this um, armor. He is my shredder. I need at least one speciality that can shred and these guys to be honest for every crate <clears throat> uh, recovery miss mission where you need to cover as much area their ability to rush basically run around spread around and then take down already i don't know shredded armor enemies is just ridiculous so and, the, and even more whenever you go uh, melee stuff this is something super capable at just low level. Uh, whenever you go with the vehicle, 
this dude can repair a vehicle so again strongest part is a combination because you will never ever fight a battle where there is only one type of enemy where only one type of your guys can, can do the tricks it's just okay mix them mix them try them out find your best suitable uh, approach and work with them but we will get to the one point here as well uh point number 29 is aim down alien bases asap and by aim down i mean yes what i mentioned i currently don't have any active they will they can just suddenly out of nowhere pop up let's say here and it is really 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 important to kill them fight them attack them as soon as possible reason is why because whenever they appear you attack i noticed just if you fly right away the threat level will be medium and you will be triggered in i call it easy base mode so basically it will be the caves it will be caves where you need to find one or two big shrooms, destroy them, that's it. I will give you a hint. If you take only your soldiers that has a rush ability and you have a lot of willpower, you literally can in one, two, three turns to rush in and take down those stupid mushrooms without killing any enemy because they will spam all the time. But let's get back to the point why you want to attack bases AC. ASAP. If you think I need some extra soldier, I need to recover, I need to build, I'm cr currently manufacturing new weapons or something. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. After some time, when you attack, there will be a a alien threat level high. When it's high, it will be trigger different scenario. And the different scenario is not the caved area, but basically the open kind of field-ish, different map, totally different map. And there is not shrooms, but there's a huge mass spawn, big alien, heavily armored, at the farthest side of the map. And whenever you trigger, basically alert enemies, they will start spawning. And basically what I'm trying to explain at least for me, that map, that scenario is way, way, way freaking harder. There is always one artillery, so there is mind control. It's a nightmare, to be honest. That's the, that's the, actually I have the video with hero difficulty that I'm trying at a, a, attacking first base and all my team is just being eliminated and not by a little bit, but I basically, Geronimo style running at the end just to see the map and I reveal more and more and more and I reveal something like eight more enemies that was spawn spawned and just waited for me to kill me. There was absolutely no chance for me to win that. No way. So whenever you attack as fast as possible, it will trigger the easy mode, the medium threat level. And that's kinda easy to cover at the beginning. That's that's I would go for it. You have my approval. If you wait enough to get that hard version, good luck, Jam. You'll need it. Last point. It found, sounds funny, but it's not a joke. Improvise, adapt, survive. Sound familiar? Yes. And I'm I'm not joking because I saw on YouTube. I don't know, those guys actually, actually, I think they need to try some cooking or something else because I don't think gaming is for them. One of the users, I will not call any names, but they were aware of the thing where this game is built like this. If you use one particular tactic or something all the time, game adapts. So listen, listen carefully. Game adapts against your playstyle. So you need to change your playstyle. So match that. And that one YouTuber gaming channel of course he's a bigger than me he she everyone behind it and he was like yeah they said the game will adapt and something but i haven't noticed anything it's i think it's just i think mimicking 
and I'm like, I'm literally playing the game, and what I'm doing, as similarly as my brother, uh, with sniper rifle you can shoot the arm whenever the arm is shut down, basically the a grenade launcher is disabled and arm at the beginning of the game has zero armor currently if i attack anywhere every in single one of them will have at least 20 if not 30 armor on their fucking arm and that's not coincidence that's because every previous fight i was just nailing them and aiming and precisely doing everything not a single melee nothing i believe whenever so basically this game is really adapting and changing and if some of the you guys youtubers have noticed that then what the fuck are you doing don't make then video about the game if you haven't even seen and understood what's happening but try some cooking as i said before maybe write a poem or something i don't know anyways the game is actually doing that a lot you will find it yourself, so keep that in mind. That's why this improvise, adapt and survive is just, it, it's not its not a joke. You will need to change your tactics. You can't make a sniper super team and, and just run out and kill whole game. The game will adapt and make your snipers obsolete. Whenever the armor is high enough and literally soon, I will not be able to take down enemy's arm because it will be too armored with my snipers and then it will be obsolete. I don't need to figure out something else. And I, I already, I'm working on my another team, dream team, half melee, -ish infiltrator, something, close combat, stunning stuff, because stun actually is quite amazing in this game. Anyways, this is a serious thing. Improvise, adapt, survive. These are all my tips, video is super long. I will of course apologize as I always do, but guys, Last words, the game is really huge in terms of classes, depth of ability combinations, enemies, tactics, your, your basically attacking, I don't know how to call it, crew, combat, something, uh, combat team, how you do it is so deep that there is no clear one way do that do this of course snipers are cool but whenever you pull out uh what i did in this one previous video it was not heavy but combined with the infiltrator he did 1200 shock damage it's basically anyone any enemy will be shocked as fuck. it was like you know clear indication not only snipers snipers are first things you discover are powerful but the game is so deep and i need i don't know if actually this game can be covered in full stop glory and cover everything and one last correction from my pre previous failed uh, mathematics uh, knowledge there is 21 combination 21 variation of your soldiers because it's 7 plus 6 plus 5 plus 4 plus 3 that's how many combinations variations in the game you can have so whenever what it means is to fully cover someone anyone me or some other youtuber if they are telling or giving releasing a video showing and explaining yeah let's learn about classes and there's like seven of them or, or, or any other number than 21 they don't fully understand what they're talking about uh, just i will i will put this bar as high and say it right away 20 freaking one and if someone says like okay i looked at 21 variation then listen fucking carefully because that 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 guy has spent a few hundred hours in the game to fully dig into the bottom of it all right <laughs> that how huge deep complex and awesome i will say awesome the game is all right so without with all this knowledge go out there and make 
game make make your entertainment cool because the game is also quite quite difficult and i hope those tips helped you probably not a single soul in the world seen so long video till the end but if you did you are absolute legend thank you for that and we will meet in the next videos cheers maris out